So thank you, Anjali. I'd like to move on to our final presentation of this session, uh, which is from Lydia Sturmieri from the Paul, uh, PSI. And Lydia is going to talk to us about the disruption effect of digitalization on the energy sector using a multi-model approach. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Lydia. Yes, hi. Okay. Can you see the screen, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I'm Lydia Sermieri, and I'm a PhD student uh, in the Energy Economics Group at Porsche Institute of Switzerland. And today I will introduce you to my uh, research topic that is about the disrupt, uh, disruption effect of digitalization on the energy sector. Uh, when we talk about or we think about what is uh, what means digitalization, we immediately think about some digital practices that are, for example, the teleworking or the e-learning and e-commerce. And uh, due to the current, <laughs> the current pandemic situation, we talk a lot about, for example, the impact of the teleworking in the um, on the energy uh, on the energy sector. So we have some uh, nice insights that are that show, for example, that the teleworking practice and or, or in the lockdown has increased has had a huge impact on the residential sector and also changed the the, uh, the transport demand. So the idea is try to um, quantify the impact that this digital practice will have on the energy system on one side. And of course, you need also to uh, analyze uh, the user's behavior because all these digital practices are, re are strongly related with, uh, with the user's behavior. So quantifying the impact and together analyze the change in user behavior bring also another question. So how is the society considered in the energy model? These are the, the main points that today we are trying to assess uh, with this presentation. So how we uh, analyze the inter interdependencies that digital practice has on the uh, on different energy sector, we um, decide to uh, create an agent-based model framework in order to analyze all the interaction and the interdependencies that there are between different sectors and also, of course, between different agents. So you, here you can see an example of how the agent-based model um, framework work. So if we analyze one of several uh, um, digital practice, that is, for example, the commuting compared to the teleworking practice, we can see that we start, uh, we have an agent um, uh, the agent makes a decision, uh, and then uh, the agent um, if, if the agent can uh, as a, a social network where he can share uh, his idea and he can change their opinion about the practice that is uh, adopting. So then uh, it comes to um, we can analyze the decision process of the agent that take into consideration both an economic uh, both an economic point of view and also um, his idea and his opinion about the practice that is we would like to to perform. Then of course we have uh, to think about um, that the teleworking practice or the community's practice is also related to the service sector or your, your working place for example. So your decision process, the, the decision process of the agent is also connected to the decision process of the service that of course needs to also analyze, uh, make a cost-benefit analysis but it also, that needs also to uh, analyze the um, uh, the willingness to, of the, his employees to uh, perform one practice compared to another. So your decision process, uh, the, the decision process of the agent is related to the decision process of the service. If the service allows you to do uh, a practice, uh, the teleworking practice, for example, in this case, um, we will have, uh, we can see that there is a, a, an impact on the energy demand. So if different energy demand because the agent that is the households will see uh, an impact in the residential demand and also in the transport demand. But at the same time, also the service sector will see an impact in its heat demand and electricity demand. And at the same time, so we can also consider that this, if the service decide to uh, apply some uh, uh, new digital practices for the for for the for its employees, he will also see an increase in the. Um, in, in this digital level. So we are moving towards a more digitalized society. On the, on the contrary, if the service decide to do not go to, um, do not uh, um, adopt a new digital, pra um, these new digital practices, um, 
of course, his employees will not be happy probably, but you will not be able, you will need in your, to consider in your decision process that you are not able to do what you would like to do. So here from this simple chart, you can really understand how connected uh, and complicated is this um, this framework uh, that brings together all these uh, analysis and all this decision process. So we can see how exactly it works, the agent-based model. We have these two different levels of interaction. So the micro interaction is the social network and the connection between the agents that in this case are the households. And then there is the micro level interaction that is this connection between the households and the firms or the service sector. The agent-based model takes input uh, the technology cost and attribute to make to make uh, the, uh, to make an econ the economic uh, analysis for the decision process, and uh, as output uh, uh, it gives some uh, exogenous demand for different sector and some technology share. So the agent-based model works uh, on an annual basis. Uh, the time horizon is from 2020 to 2050. And of course, there is a population growth over the time horizons and consider different social network and interaction, considering that you have both physical interaction and also what is called um, virtual interaction due to the new digital uh, technologies. And the agent in this case are households and they are representative of the uh, Swiss households. Uh, so uh, each agent has, um, is characterized by some uh, attributes and are income, age, and education. Um, and uh, each agent has also some uh, uh, variables that relative in this case, for example, to the teleworking practice and to other sectors. So uh, if we analyze the teleworking practice, we can analyze the annual millage the, that is related to the, that has an impact on the, for the transport. Then we can, uh, we know in which type of buildings the, the agent is living. And so, which is the impact in the uh, eating and electric consumption. And of course, we also know which is his education and his job. So we can relate the agent to uh, the service. How the decision process of the agent works. There is, as we said, um, uh, two different, um, uh, inside, we, we have both the ideas and the opinion in the decision process, but we also, of course, have some economic consideration based on the available income and uh, uh, the share of the income that we can use uh, for, um, for each technology. So we consider some investment costs, operation costs, efficiency and the energy costs in order to select the best technology uh, related to each sector. Um, in this case, the, the technology in the agent-based model are aggregated technology uh, that are separate for each sector in non-conventional technology and conventional technology. And as we said, as the output, we have some energy demand and some technology share. Uh, then uh, how we can uh, analyze the impact that this change in the energy demands we, we have in the energy sector, we need to uh, couple uh, the agent-based model with, uh, with um, uh, at times uh, an energy system model that is in this case system, so the Swiss times uh, energy system. Uh, the two models are coupled, so the agent-based model is passing uh, a demand and a technology preference to, to STEM, and STEM uh, takes this demand as input and this output goes some, uh, gives some technology costs and attributes for the aggregated technology considered in the agent-based model. Um, STEM is an optimization model, while the agent-based mod, uh, model is a socioeconomic model. This is why, uh, as first step, we decide to consider only some aggregate technology in the agent-based model in order to reduce the complexity of, of, the, of the problem. And um, how these aggregate technology are analyzed in uh, STEM, so we can see that, for example, for transport and residential, we can see how the, the technology a uh, mix uh, in STEM is aggregated for these two uh, technologies. And we also uh, pass the technology share to, uh, from the agent-based model to the STEM model. That means that uh, share constraint replace growth constraint in the, in the STEM. Then uh, we, we run some scenario analysis. And as, the, as output from the STEM, we have cost and attributes for the aggregate technology in the agent-based model. 
Of course, the, couple, uh, the coupling between uh, these two models uh, requires an iterative process. So there is a uh, um, convergence criteria. And uh, uh, if when the convergence criteria is met, uh, we, we can stop to iterate the process. So we uh, uh, this, uh, apply this framework, this coupling framework to uh, a case study. And we, just, uh, we want to analyze the effect of teleworking on the energy demand and users behavior in Switzerland. So we make some assumption for the, uh, for the teleworking. If the agent decide to adopt the practice of teleworking, he will work th uh, three days a week from home. And we need to also to consider that the commuted practice is the 24% of the annual millage kilometer in Switzerland. And then of course, the also will also see an increase of 20% in the its consumption and also at a plus 10% in the electricity consumption. Then we decide to, uh, we analyze two different scenarios. One is the baseline scenarios. And the idea with the baseline scenario is understand how um, which is the spread of this practice in the societies, uh, how it works, the inter interdependencies between the sectors, and which are the energy implications for the long scenarios in order to answer to our uh, first two main points, so quantify the impact of digital practice on the energy system and analyze the changes in the user's behavior. Then we uh, uh, apply also a climate target scenario that in this case is uh, a target of uh, eight um, megaton of CO2 in 2050. And why we are doing this is to analyze how the society is reflecting in the, ener in the, energy, mo in the energy model assumption. Because we need to consider and to understand if all uh, uh, integrating all these uh, users' behavior in the, the energy models um, makes sense and how actually uh, the energy model are reacting to, to this user's behavior. So in the, climate, in the climate target scenario, in this case, we, analyze, uh, we assume that society uh, doesn't have any, uh, is not aware of environmental is issues. So uh, this means that they are acting exactly like they are acting today and in future they, they will not change their belief, uh, um, their behavior uh, according uh, to, um, to meet and to respect uh, or to end to these uh, environmental uh, targets. So for the, for the baseline scenario, we have some insight from the agent-based model. We can see that the diffusion of the teleworking uh, reached a 43% in 2050. And um, these are the um, output result uh, of the third iteration. So after three iteration, we can see that the model converge. So from these uh, baseline scenarios, what we can get, we can get, for example, that there is a reduction in the total BVKM for the transport passenger demand. And this is not a huge uh, reduction in the demand, but we have also to consider that this uh, um, reduction in the demands apply to the commuting. So this means that these five BVKM actually are uh, the, um, shows a reduction of the 35 percent of the BVKM for the commuting. So we can see how the the the, um, the transport passenger uh, demand will reduce. And then we have a second insight that we can uh, as we can see from uh, 2030 to 2050, if we apply um, the, uh, we, the, this couple model and we consider the teleworking practice in, is in, the, uh, in the Greek columns, we see that there is a change of transport mode due to the teleworking practice. So this means that the increase in the teleworking practice would lead to an increase also to um, a shift from the private transport to the, uh, the public transport. Another thing, uh, we also, so this is from the, from the transport uh, sector point of view, then we analyze what happened in the, in the residential sector. And we see that in this case, uh, with, the, um, uh, the, with the agent-based model, we have an, and the teleworking practice, we have an increase of the 13% of the energy demand. 
If we analyze then uh, which is the share of the aggregate technology in the residential demand, we see that the difference between the, the baseline and the, the, the couple model with the agent phase model shows that the, the agent phase model uh, has a higher um, share of conventional technology compared to what is suggested from the uh, from the, the baseline model, um, from the, the normal model, let's say. And how explain this increase in non-conventional technology in the residential sector? Well, this we have to analyze what happened in the aggregate technology in the private passenger cars. And we can see that, for example, the agent-based model um, suggests that uh, the, also the um, conventional technology for the in the private uh, transport will have a um, higher share compared to the to the baseline scenarios but we have also, we can also see that the electric vehicle are uh, um, are taking over the um, the, non, the share of non conventional technology compared to what is suggested from the um, the baseline model that uh, was um, uh, suggesting a mega share of uh, hybrid technology. And this is done because from, from uh, an agent point of view, the hybrid technology has a, a huge, um, a higher cost. So the, uh, the agent based model will not select the hybrid vehicles. And how it works, these interdependencies between the two sectors, we have also to think to consider that in the decision process for the eating technology competes also with the decision process of the transport technology. So this means that if an agent decides to allocate uh, more of his uh, available income to um, electric vehicles, for example, probably he will not have enough um, available income, disposable income, to also uh, select uh, um, renewable technologies in the, the, um, in, the residential, uh, in the residential sector, but it will decide to, uh, to take, for example, the natural gas boiler, that is the cheaper technology considered in the, in the, uh, in the agent-based model. So this is to show how actually it works, this um, interdependencies between the, the decision process and different um, different service uh, different sectors and as uh, an overview of actually bringing for to bring in together all the impact uh, in, in the, uh, that this uh, practice will have in the in the energy sector we can see that there is a reduction in the energy the, in the final energy consumption of the service sector and a reduction in the um, final energy consumption of, of the transport se sector, but the, re the reduction, these two reductions are not enough to compensate the increase uh, of the demand in the residential sector. So this is interesting because we can see that we will have an increase of 4% in the primary energy consumption and also a 5% increase in the CO2 emission is if we consider to um, uh, this share of, uh, um, teleworking practice. And this is interesting because it's kind of different of what is suggested that the teleworking practice will have a positive impact on the, um, on the energy consumption, but actually this, it shows that it really depends on the, of course, on the assumption, but also on, uh, on the country that you are, anal uh, are analyzing. And in any case, that is really important um, considers all the interdependencies between dif these different sectors and all the rebound effects that this practice will have for the different sector in order to avoid to overestimate or underestimate the energy impact. So this was the to, to answer to our the, the first two points. So they quant quantify the, the impact and analyze the change in the in users' behavior. The, the other point was then now that we analyze uh, how important is uh, now that we know how important it is to consider this user's behavior in our analysis is we re how we react or is the the, the energy model reacts or, or not to to this insight so we decide to we have we try to apply um, a climate uh, um, a climate scenario with this eight uh, megaton co2 targets in 2050 and what we see is that for, uh, is that there is a huge uh, different trend of technology adoption in transport. So uh, the agent-based model uh, suggests a 
lower share uh, speed of technology adoption in the transport. So this means that we are not able to reach in 2050 the um, total non-conventional technology that the, the non-conventional technology will take over uh, all the, the demand for uh, for um, for transport. And so how we can in any case achieve this this target we see that um, uh, the STEM model uh, try uh, deploys uh, new uh, more uh, conservation in industry in uh, or more CO2 capture in hydrogen and biogases. We have an, an, an increased use of ethanol in the in the transport in the transport sector in order to um, meet the CO2 emission target. But what this means? I mean, if um, he's in is if this, this is our question. So is society represented in the energy model and in its assumption? We, we can see that if we do not consider user preference to achieve this target, we, we, can, we, are, we see that there is a, a CO2 tax that goes from 0 0.08 uh, um, uh, Swiss franc of, uh, per megaton of CO2 in 2020 to uh, 0.75 um, Swiss francs uh, per megaton of CO2 in 2050. Then we say, okay, let's, we try to apply this uh, instead of um, having a um, CO2 target, we decide to apply this CO2 tax and uh, together with users' preference uh, to uh, try to see uh, which target we can reach. And as you can see, we, we saw that considering user preference and the uh, CO2 tax uh, suggested from the previous iteration, we are not able to achieve the uh, eight uh, megatons per CO2 in, to, in 2050, but we arrive more or less to um, 12 uh, megaton of CO2 um, emission in 2050. So what this means? This means that also, um, the carbon tax and the cost and the policies that we are applying in order to achieve some scenarios needs to consider uh, the user's preference. So we need to find a way to include in the carbon tax the user's preference. So actually this is like an open question or this is open for, uh, for discussion. And the conclusion is that we, from this, coupling model, we, we are able to analyze the impact, the direct and indirect impact that digital practices has had on different energy sector. We can under, uh, analyze the inter interdependency between uh, this sector that must be considered to avoid the overestimation of impact. And then we, can also, we also saw that the consumer's preference and, society, and the acceptance of society plays an important role. So, I would like to conclude this presentation with some uh, point for, uh, to, that we can discuss and is about the CO2 tax, for example, must incorporate social behavior, but how can we do that? And another point is that uh, the evolution of the, of the society must be reflected in the, in the energy model. And at the moment, are we overestimating the future development that we are not really considering um, the evolution of, of society? And are we also underestimating costs? These are some uh, questions that I would like to, to bring up to you. And uh, I now with this, I conclude my presentation and I'd like to thank you all for your attention. And I would like also to thank my supervisor, uh, Ivan Grospanos, and uh, the group leader, uh, Tom Cover for their, for their support. So now I will take question. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Lydia. Um, re really interesting presentation. Um, it would be great to have a discussion, but I'm afraid we're out of time. So okay. there is a couple of questions on the Q&A, and I wonder if you could type answers to those, uh, please, because I, 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 I think we need to finish the session now. Uh, thank you very much to all three presenters. Um, it's been a really interesting morning. We're going to reconvene again at quarter past 11 uh, European time.